What you said. I told you that it's time to start the show. That you only meant well. Yeah, the show's well, gonna do of well. Course you did. What you said. I said let's go. That it's all for the best. Yeah, it's probably of gonna be like the best did. podcast. What you said. God, do I have to keep repeating That's myself? Just what we need. But you decided this. Hold up, I what thought we both say. decided to do this. What did you say? So let's start the show. Hey everyone, welcome to mm, What You Say, an OC podcast. My name is Lise Daly. And I am Scott Daly. And together, we're, we're the, the Dailies. Dailies. Yes, this is the podcast where each and every single week, my wife Elise and I go through the hit 2000s teen drama, The OC, episode by episode. This week on the show, we are covering season three, episode three, The End of Innocence. Or... The birds and the bees. <laughs> what? The oh, birds and they, the bees. Oh, because the sex. Because yeah. there's there's pre there's pre eighteen year old sex yeah. that we watch. Yeah. On the television. The end of innocence. Isn't that weird? Like I know the actors are all over eighteen, so it's fine. But like we're watching a scene in which two seventeen year old, sixteen year old children do it. Mm-hmm. That's kind of weird. It's kind of yeah. weird. I don't know how I feel about it. Well, how did you feel about it whenever you were watching the Seth and Summer and they were 15? Um, <laughs> or did you really not think about that? Oddly better. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. I It just, I, I, I thought, the reason I'm thinking of this is because I watched a movie called Carrie recently. And oh, the Stephen King yeah, Carrie. Yeah, it was yeah. a Stephen King adaptation. And Brian De Palma's Carrie opens with a scene of all these 16-year-old girls naked in the shower, showering. And of course, there are actresses that are adults. But I feel it's like you, weird. I feel like you couldn't do that in 2020. You couldn't, you couldn't do a shower scene with nakedness when they're children, right? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. I'm not a like, director. All, the, all like the teen comedies that i grew up with it's weird a lot to think of nudity about. yeah it's weird to think about that i've never thought about it. it's fucking with my head weird anyway uh let's talk about- <laughs> let's just completely change the subject to something better let's talk about the oc but we can't do that right away for no. some reason because we have other stuff to do for some reason what because, do we have to do because everybody doesn't really watch the show the oc they just come here to hear about our lives we're gonna tell them about our lives really quick oh, our, our with our rosies and thorns lives. yes i mean our lives are very interesting we do lots of things oh we do so many things we do so many things we travel to so many places oh my god yesterday we went to we dick's so many people sporting goods and we bought two chairs i was really excited about it and that's all we did yesterday you got me some oh, no i went outside <laughs> You guys will find out about that later. Yeah, speaking of which, let's move on to our Rosies and Thornies. Um, this is the part of the show where what, Elise? I don't want to take your spot. I took it's your... It's the part where Scott and I look back on the week and we talk about the good, the bad, the Rosies, and the Thornies, as we call them. Uh-huh. And, the, and we're going to start with the bad first, and I'm going to go ahead and start with my bad first. Oh, you do it, baby. Because you, it's, because it, you is... were like, and that's all we did, and that's not all that happened. Everyone strap in. I hope you're all sitting down. <laughs> Put on your seatbelts because Elise is about to go on the I'm rancher so coaster. Mad. So, first of all, we know that during the pandemic, there have been a lot of businesses that have had a hard time. And three of our normal breakfast spots have fallen victim to the pandemic and have closed since this whole thing since March. Our coffee shop that we actually chose the house that we're living in because it was close to it. I don't know if we can actually down. say that. We found it and we were like, oh, yeah, we should try and find one around here. It kind of makes me feel a little pathetic if that, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying it's not true. We but- found it because we were going and we like, we realized that there was this coffee store that still existed and we drove around and we were like, oh, well, this is actually a really cute neighborhood. So we drove around and then we found out that there's coffee, there, was, there were houses for rent. So we didn't. Is that true? Yeah. That's how we found the house? That's how we found the house. Huh. Okay. Yeah. And then, so coffee shop. Then there's another place that Scott and I frequented that has other locations, but they closed the location over by us. Um, that mm-hmm. we used to do it was a little old haunt, and actually, whenever we lived or whenever I lived up around Plano, it was walking distance to my apartment. So that's kind of how we 
found that place and then yeah. there's a location here, but that closed. Yeah, I would drive then, over first thing in the morning and we'd go to breakfast. Yeah. And then... Because it was definitely not at your house already. Right. And then <laughs> the other one was... <laughs> The place where we were, I was excited for a week to go to this place for breakfast. Think, as soon as we made the appointment for the dog groomer that mm-hmm. we found out was like in the same shopping center as the place that we went to breakfast all the time, has the best biscuits ever. I think we need to preface this whole thing with the fact that A, you're pregnant and so you're, <laughs> you're hungry all the time and B, breakfast is my favorite you thing. You really fucking love breakfast. Like breakfast, I could eat breakfast foods for every meal and I'd be happy. There's so many different varieties. I love biscuits. I love waffles. I love French toast. I love pancakes. I love eggs. I love, I mean like breakfast is where it's at. Brunch is is where it's at. So anyways, we had made the plan because we were going to drop off our dog at the groomer and then we were just going to go and have breakfast. And so pick up breakfast. We were going to pick it up because we're trying not to eat out inside the restaurants anymore. Hell There's no outdoor no. seating for this. And so I call because I was going to place the order right before we go and leave to drop off the dog. That way it's ready by the time we get there and drop her off and have all that. And the phone w- number wouldn't work. I'm sorry. This number can't be and completed I was like, as dialed. What, what is this? This is weird. And then I Googled the restaurant just to make sure that it was, you know, like open and all of that. And I found out it was permanently closed. It had closed four days before we had wanted to go. Rest in peace, with Crossroads. no notice. And so well, I was... I'm sorry they didn't call you about their restaurant. They put notice. We just didn't see it. Well, <laughs> no notice to me. They put a, it on their Facebook. A loyal patron <laughs> and chose to move to this new house because I was so excited that we were going to be close to it. And okay, then that again, again, the, I, I feel like it weighs to, in my decision, Scott. I feel like it was a part of my decision. We did not pick the house because it was next to this breakfast place, but it was a definite pro. It was on my pro list. It was on the pro list, but it was probably near the bottom of the pro. List. No, it was at the top. It was at the top of my pro list. Anyways. So that place closed. It did. And I was frustrated. And one thing. You were. If my, if I'm hungry and my plans are not what they were supposed okay, to be. Okay, so let's again, let's. And I'm pregnant. You're pregnant. Let's just say I get very short and I'm not a pleasant person to be around and I don't want to make decisions. I want decisions to be made for me because my decision didn't work out and I'm just hungry and I need food. Anyway, so that was an irritating Saturday. but For, for both of us. So three of our places actually closed. Mm-hmm. And then we had one more local haunt left, Scott. We had one more. And it's a coffee shop. And I was like, on Sunday. It's called I Love You a Latte. Yeah. And I decided. It's an adorable name. I will go and I will get us some coffee because Decaf all of our you. other local places have closed and I need to support the local places. That way we don't have another one that closes. Yeah. Yeah. So I go and I order my coffee and. This is a very long story. Then I sit down <laughs> and I wait and very quickly they give me Scott's drink, which was a hot drink. And then five minutes later, I walk over to the counter and I'm like, hey, I haven't gotten my other coffee. Is there something wrong? What's the deal? And they're like, oh, yeah, our espresso machine is broken. So I can just make these with regular coffee and with half and half or heavy cream. That way it tastes more like a latte. And I was like... I fine. I was very upset. She could tell through my ma- the eyes. I mean, she couldn't see the whole face. You know who else could tell? Scott. Because I was getting 30 texts a second from you about how angry you were. Well, they tell me that. And then I'm like, well, then what did you give me? This this other drink that I already have that's hot. And they yeah. didn't bother to tell me any of that. last I checked, lattes do have espresso in them. Yeah. Anyways, I got really frustrated with it. Because I'd already paid. 
Like they knew that their espresso machine wasn't working. So why would you let me order a latte? So that's a fourth pay place for gone. it. So yeah, I'm not going back there. It's a fourth place. This gone. is the second time that we've gone there. The first time, what was it last week or a couple weeks ago? They we were lucky. messing up it with was, the food. It was someone else that was. Yeah, they'd been waiting for, waiting 45, for 45 minutes, minutes for, for food. food. Yeah, I mean, like it's a small little independently owned place. They just don't have good processes and systems. And I get it. They it's, they incurred the wrath of the Elise monster. And you know, like I know you went out and got that on your own, and you were having a really tough time. And I just want you to know, you weren't the only one suffering. Because while you were doing that, I was here dying in Dark Souls over and over and over again. So it's really like we had the same experience. Yeah, sure. (laughs) Anyways, so all of our places have died to us or actually died. Died to us. (laughs) In the past few months. And I'm really upset about it. I'm sorry, babe. We will find new restaurants. Um, It's okay. I realized Cafe Brazil. Forgot about Cafe Brazil. There's plenty of breakfast in the world. We'll get more. There's always donuts. There's always donuts. The end. Yeah. Anyway, what was your thorn? Um, our Don't gate, make it as long as mine. Sorry. Our gate fell down again. And my dog got out. And so I spent an hour chasing my dog around the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. The end. No. Okay. Um, so, I mean, remember a few months ago when I was yelling at our landlord and then a month ago when I said I would take back every bad thing I said about the landlord? Well, I'm taking back the take back because the gate is still broken and it, a big gust of wind came and made our gate fall down and... Ghost escaped and Penny lost her mind because when ghosts escape, all Penny does is like bark and like chase after ghosts, but then like run back in the backyard because she's like, oh, my God, the ghost is that. What do I do? Um, so I scooped up Penny and I drove around the neighborhood for almost an hour yeah. looking for ghosts. And like, you know what, Scott? Here's the thing. What's the thing? Could we fix the gate? Probably. No. But we're not going to because it's the principle of the matter I don't that think we've I- contacted this landlord how many times in order to fix this gate and they've done nothing like thankfully it's not some plumbing issue that we've contacted them and we can live with a gate you know like just propped up and it's still I fairly cannot functional. fix the gate the, 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 we need new I mean I guess I could buy new boards because the gate needs new boards no we're not going to give that new boards yeah. we're not going to give them any more of this money because I don't have a table saw. I can't I can't saw the boards to length. I guess I could use a hand saw, but that's really hard. Scott, we're just not going to do it. Yeah. I mean, you you dogs we, don't need to go outside. You lease a place, they should they should fix the stuff when it breaks. Look, here's what happened is I spent an hour driving around my neighborhood looking for my dog and by the end of that hour, you're at the point where you're like She's gone. She's gone. I'm never going to see her again or she's dead. And that's what your mind starts doing. And oh, man, I was already crafting the incredibly angry email to my landlord to be like, well, my dog's dead. Thanks. You know what else is bad? What? You told me that you were out there running around and some lady saw her. And like didn't even stop in order to try and help. Yeah, like, but what? But I feel bad about getting mad at her because, yeah, there's this lady walking her dogs and like. I, I went, ran and scooped up Penny and she's like, the white one's out too. Have you seen the white one? And I was like, no, have you? Yeah. She went that way. It's like, did you, cause like the thing about ghost is she's the friendliest dog in the world and she's going to run up to you and say hello and like try to get pets from you. So I felt bad cause I got mad at her cause I was like, no, cause I was the yelling. And then she came and knocked on our door. But th- that's creepy, Scott. Yeah. How did she know it was us? I know. I, that's the thing. That's creepy. I don't know. She's definitely not like our next door neighbor or anything. I don't know how. Ugh, that's weird. Anyway, the gate fell and I go. I found her. I found her. Yeah. And she's fine. We still now. have two dogs. It's okay. Yeah. But that was rough. It was yeah. a rough hour. Yeah. So on a, a better note. Yes, please. please. Um, a couple weeks ago, I don't know if we had shared with everyone that we took Christmas card pictures because we are adults and we now have to send out Christmas <laughs> cards. And we also just wanted to have an actual like picture photo shoot where, in my opinion, I wasn't like Humpty Dumpty. And then number two, I'm sorry, pre- Humpty Dumpty? Baby. Yeah. Like, like a big top like over because like like I'm so egg. fat. Yeah. Anyways, so we'd gotten them taken and I was really excited to see what they looked like. And they came 
in this week as far as like our digital proofs. And so we got to order our Christmas pictures and they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love them. They're very good. They are wonderful. You look adorable and I look fine. You look And handsome. the dogs look wonderful. And the dogs are funny. Yeah. So anyways. adding the dogs was a good idea, at least. Thank you. It really, it really maybe we'll share what the card looks like on it. Like we'll put a yeah. link to the card we on could do when that. it comes in. It's supposed to come in tomorrow, actually. They're supposed to come in. Yep. So maybe we'll share a picture of what the card looks like. Um, that would be nice of us, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's a lot of fun. We're all about being nice these days. Of course we are. We're just the nicest people in the world. We are. Okay, Scott, what's your rose? Um, my rose is, actually, it happened today. Um, mm -hmm. I want to preface it. this just in case certain people are listening. Um, I'm very happy in the job I'm currently at. Um, the, but the job I'm currently at is kind of a weird consulting situation where I'm paid by the hour. So if they don't have a client for me to work on, I just don't get paid anymore. So while I am enjoying the freedom of that, and so far I've gotten 40 hours a week, so it's not like, and it, there's plenty of work so far, there is, you know, there's an unknown factor to it. So I'm not like entirely settled, um, and an opportunity, a, a job interview opportunity kind of fell into my lap a couple weeks ago. It was for a job I applied to months and months ago while I was in the middle of my job search and they had frozen. That's why they didn't contact me. Not because they didn't want me because they just had frozen hiring. They unfroze it and then they wanted to meet with me. And I had an interview a week ago and I had a second interview today. Um, and I killed it. I really like I Scott walked out of the room and goes, at least I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm, like, not a okay, gloaty, I'm, not a, I'm not a gloaty person normally. I, look. Scott said it was the best interview he's ever given. <laughs> I think I, I, I mean, our listeners can attest to this or not. I think I'm fairly good at communication. I'm fairly good at talking to people. Are you? I thought so. You're giving me a look. You I, communicate with me? I th yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'm good at talking. I love to talk. You're so like interviews talking. are not a problem for me because someone's like, talk about yourself for an hour. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. <laughs> Just an hour. You want four, four. I can do four hours. Um, I'm good at it. And I, I fucking killed it. So I don't <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know if I don't, I still don't know if I'm going to get the job. Like I could have killed the interview and there's still a better candidate that comes along. That's true. Um, I don't know if I'll take the job if I get the job because I'm kind of happy where I am right now. I'm not sure what this is going to pay. I'm not sure what the structure looks like, but it was just nice. You know, there, the, the early part of this year was me going through this process again and again and again, sending out hundreds of resumes, not getting very many responses, getting some responses. We had that whole event where the uh, uh, company just completely ghosted me and like never even told me I didn't get the job. They just stopped speaking to me and they still never hired anybody and they still That's the, yeah, the position still open i found actually yeah i found out very recently that this position is still open and i'm like um uh, screw you guys anyway um the point is it was very nice to go through the process and feel good about it like just from, from beginning to end just feel good about the part that i could control in the process i get that it felt really good it was just very nice i i, I think it's you know, there's it's there's such a difference to doing an interview when you don't have a job and like, oh, my God, this is my first interview that I've done in a month and a half. And if I don't get this, like this could be a bunch of stress for me and my family. And and the interview where you're like, I have a job already. I'm just looking to see what's out there. I'm just kind of playing the field a little bit. And the pressure is kind of off. And this was the latter. And that's when I performed the best. And it's easier to get a job when you have a job. I killed it. I killed it. So I don't know what's going to come of it. I might end up getting the job. I might end up taking it. I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm happy that I got to do it that and, uh, you know, flex my muscles, my interview muscles a little bit because they asked behavioral questions, which like behavioral questions are ones that I think a lot of people don't like. Like, tell me about an instance when, but that's just storytelling. Those are, and I love to do that. They don't normally ask those questions in your interviews. It depends. It depends. Okay, because my interviews, that's all that they ask. And if you don't, if it's not a question where they ask one of those, you should have an example of one where you've handled a situation and rope that in because oh, yeah. they want. Well, the, here's, let me interview, interview guidance with Scott. Here's what you do. 
you think of three stories before your interview. You think of three stories in which you did something, you had a challenge, and you overcame the challenge. Oh, you know then, what I would talk about. <laughs> and then you just work that story into whatever it is the question they asked. They don't. The thing about interviews is they don't actually care too much about the content of the answer. They want to see how you respond and like how quick you are on your feet. I didn't tell you. <laughs> I was in a training uh, a couple weeks ago. Well, actually, I had to rewatch it because I was in another one that I had to miss. And so I had to go back and see the recording. But on our district training, they talked about that one parent from last year. Oh, really? It was awful. And they yeah. And um, so I just. Don't get yourself in legal trouble. I'm not here saying on the podcast, anything. Elise. I'm not saying anything okay. other than. I was shocked that they said something about that in our <laughs> district wide training so that everyone knew about the situation too. It was handled. There were some things that I felt like were not as completely accurate. accurate. But then afterwards I told my principal that they had shared something. She goes, are you serious? <laughs> so now I get to be a part of that district story. So in any interview I have, I can at least go to it. And, you know, all those yeah. people at the district office, they know about it. So if they know I was helping and, and solving it. That is a great interview story. And you will work that answer into any oh, question they ask. It bloody. doesn't matter what the question is. You will work in it. And that's what you do, folks. <sighs> Just come up with your three stories. Stuff certainly happened to you at work. And you come up with it. And you just you just you just work it in. You just you just weave it into whatever their question is. They asked me uh, what my two biggest office pet peeves were. Oh, what did you say? And I was like, okay, well, I got like five hundred. But um, <laughs> going into the office, <laughs> office pet peeve number one: people that don't respond to emails drives me fucking crazy. Hate it. I don't care if you can't deliver the thing to me right now. If I ask you for something and you can't get it to me till Friday. Just email me and tell me you'll have it to me on Friday. Like, just do it. Just I, th that it's so much better than not hearing from you in five days and getting the thing Friday. Like, I'd so much rather at least know because I had to plan around it. And thing number two is unnecessary meetings. I hate them. If you can do it in an email, do it in an email. Sometimes you need meetings. I get it. You need meetings. Not every time you need meetings. <laughs> And like the thing about those pet peeves is they're actually really dangerous because you don't know the personality of the person that's asking you the question. But I'm fairly good at reading people. And I, I got the vibe from her that she was simpatico on this thing. So I really just I really just went into it. And she's like, oh, yeah, 100 percent agree. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind meetings as long as they're quick. I just like, especially in the business world, there are so many things that could just just have been a, like a one sentence in an email well, and yeah. we do a, a 30 minute meeting. And plus, once everyone gets together, they just want to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't that. know anything about that. I don't like to talk. <laughs> Our internal doof partner meetings go over 90 minutes each month and because I feel bad about just it like every time. It's not me. Is it something you could send in an email? Well... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. Are you sure? Yes, because part of the, the meetings we have is us just connecting with our partners and uh -huh. just like seeing how they're going and getting to talk with them because we don't get to talk every day. And it's once a month and we skipped it one month and I felt like, oh, my God, I haven't talked to Ruben and Elliot in 7,000 days. And you know what? What? I'm sure they were fine. Look, Elise, I didn't come on the show to be judged by you. Yes, you did. Fine, we're canceling all the meetings going forward. You married me to be judged by me. That's true. Hey, it's been I'm a judger. It's been 25 minutes. Can we talk about the OC now? Oh, yeah. We'll make this quick. Okay, so The End of Innocence <laughs> <laughs> is season three, episode three of The OC. It was written by Stephanie Savage and directed by Michael Lang. Aired originally on September 22nd, 2005. September 22nd. That's uh, you close know to your birthday. It's close to my birthday. That means, that means next week's episode is going to be on Ghost's birthday. It will be. Okay, tell me about that episode overview. This week on The OC, Sandy and Julie begin to interfere in Ryan and Marissa's relationship. Dean Hess, that's the Dean of Discipline, threatens Seth and Summer with their lack of school spirit. Meanwhile, Caleb's will leaves the family in shock and Jimmy in trouble. Yeah. Elise, what did you think 
of episode three of season three. Um, this is an episode where I won't say I loved it, won't say I hated it. I liked it okay. It was just kind of middle of the road. There were some things that I really liked. Obviously, my Rosie, I liked. Um, <laughs> there weren't a lot of things that I felt like I would say that I hated in this episode. It was just kind of like, blah, okay. You know, my favorite thing that you do is? What? I, I love you so much. So the whole structure of our show is tell me something you liked and tell me something you didn't like. Mm -hmm. And the last two weeks in the summary section, you've been like, there's been things I liked. <laughs> there's been things I didn't like. <laughs> well, it's true. There have been some rosies and there have been some thornies. More rosies than thornies. You might say you cut off some of the thornies so you could hold the rose a little tighter, if you will. Yeah, I mean, but you maybe forgot one thorn. Contrary to popular belief, every rose does not have its thorn. Yeah, that's true, Scott. That is true. What do you think of this episode? <laughs> um, were there some things you liked? There were some things I liked. Were there, and there some were some things, things you didn't I like? just didn't like very much. So it was kind of like a you liked it, you didn't like yeah, it. Yeah. No, okay. I actually don't think this was that good of an episode. I think it's definitely the weakest so of the first three. You don't you make the same joke again? That there were more thorns. <laughs> And not enough rosies. Every thorn has another thorn. So you you would actually maybe say there were a lot of thorns and just some buds. What is not a, really any roses, just a bud. What is a thorn but just a large collection of very sharp atoms? It's a spiky. You, you got them spiky pokies? <sighs> you got a lot of spiky pokies? What are you? I, I don't know what you're talking about anymore. The thornies. The spiky pokies. Thornies. What is a spiky pokey thorny? Please define it and use it in a sentence. The spiky pokey thornies are very hurtful when you grab onto <laughs> the the stem. The step? The stem. The spiky pokey thornies hurt. They're a part of the stem. Could you give me its word? Could you give me its origin? Yes, the origin is Elysian. <laughs> As are all good words. Um, no, I, I think this is a pretty weak episode overall. I mean, you're absolutely right that there are some, some good parts, but I don't think there's a great moment in this episode. Um, I think there's the star of season three has been Seth Cohen and the star of season three have been Seth and Summer's relationship. Yes, it has. Because it has it? mostly been. Don't steal my rose. I'm not. It has mostly been in the background. Um, it's not the main drama of the uh, show, yes, yes. which means it just allows it to be wonderful and and great. Um, everything else, eh, it's fine. Spiky pokey thorny things. I mean, I, I predicted the Caleb is broke thing. Totally predicted that weeks and weeks ago. And Spoiler, we're it, getting there. It was wonderful. Um, I liked Ryan and Marissa in this episode, which is unusual for me. So we'll talk about that in a bit. And you know why you liked it? Why is that? Because Marissa was going to leave. So you were like, oh, it's okay. Don't you step on my rose, baby. Don't you trample my, my rose garden. I never promised you a rose garden. Yes, you did. I did? Yeah, you did. Shit. Hey, Elise, let's talk about what? rosies and thornies. Okay. Well, you want to hear about my thorn first? I do. I do. Um, I'm just really kind of tired of Jimmy. I think we're all tired of Jimmy. And it's con man Jimmy, again, trying to, you know, pull one out. Over onto Julie, and uh, he got beat up. I think maybe him getting beat up could have been my Rosie, but I'm just I'm over it. I'm done with it. I'm glad that I think he's over and done with because Marissa told her dad that if he is going to leave this time, then he can't come back for good. I'm in trouble. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm in real trouble, Marissa. I tried to fix it. I I, I, I couldn't fix it. <laughs> I gotta go, and I, I can't. I can't take you with me. <laughs> I've been a terrible father. Marissa, I, uh... Dad, look, I, I don't know what kind of trouble you're in, but if you have to go, then go. But if you leave, then I don't want you to come back. It's too hard to keep saying goodbye like this. And so Jimmy usually listens to his daughter, but it's just, we've talked about it before. It's been the same beat with Jimmy over and over again, and it was the same beat again. And I'm glad it's done. 
Spiky porky, spiky pokey thorny thing. Spiky p- porky? <laughs> spiky pokey thorny thing. Sliced off. Jimmy. This is uh, a moment on the show where I want to ask a spoiler and I'm not going to. You can ask. I may not tell. I don't want you to tell. I don't actually want you to tell if he ever comes back on the show. But oh. it feels like this is the end and I think it's good. Um, bye bye, Tate. Bye bye, Mr. Tate Donovan. Go do some more Hercules voice work. I really thought, so yeah, the plot of this this episode and the plot of the season so far has been Jimmy is in financial problems again, and the uh, Caleb Will reading has has been his golden ticket. He's he's proposed to Julie. He now rushes into a marriage with her, although he doesn't stick around for the marriage. He wants to get married the day after the Will reading so he can get the money right away and get it over to the guy he owns. And then, ha ha ha, Caleb is broke. Fuck you, Jimmy. And so the loan shark that he borrowed the money from. I would have thought if I wanted to get the money right away, I would have married her before the will reading instead of after the will reading. But, you know, Jimmy's not the brightest. Bulb, it makes so. no difference. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as they're married, it's he he's it's, that's his that's his moolah. Um, but then he gets beaten up. And I honestly thought so. The you way, thought he was going to die. Well, You're be, like, are they going to kill Jimmy? Well, because he's going to die. First of all, like he get like the loan shark person shows up there in the very traditional mob way where like two big men step out of a black vehicle. And he like he said, get in the car, Jimmy. And then he says, I'm real sorry about this. And you're like, oh, fuck. And so they take him under the docks and they beat the shit out of him. And then the scene ends with them throwing him face first into the ocean. He's and just I'm floating. like. And I'm like, oh, Jimmy's going to fucking die. And then we go to the next morning and and Marissa gets a phone call. And I'm like, this is it. This is the we found Jimmy's body floating next to where you and Ryan make out on that lifeguard stand. But no, he's just been really beat up. And like the they make his voice all nasally, like his nose is all stuff. He doesn't actually even look that bad. He could he should be. If, he looked a lot like it would have been worse. He should, probably should have been in the hospital at the point that he was beaten up. Oh, yeah. But they do this weird thing. Here's what I don't understand about Jimmy getting beat up. So he gets beat up because he didn't pay. So they're trying to tell him. This time you get beat up. If you don't pay us next time, it's going to be worse. And then they just let him go. And now he's just going to get on his boat and but run away. the bank owns the boat, babe. What? So what's his plan I don't know. here? Like, I don't know. Is the he, bank owns the boat. Is it, he going to steal the boat from the bank? I mean. Probably. Because Jimmy doesn't think right. It doesn't. The, the, the man just hired two goons to beat the shit out of him. As soon as he finds out he's run, he's dead. Why did the why did the evil loan people like let him go? I don't understand what their plan here was. Like obviously it's like you beat someone up to send a message that you you don't fuck around with me, you pay me back, and then they don't like take his boat from him. <laughs> they the don't, bank like, owns the boat. Oh yes, because these people that are gonna illegally loan money and then beat people up under a dock are really like concerned. Oh no, boss, we can't boss, we can't steal his boat. The bank does this a bank's boat. We can't take the boat. You sound just like them. <laughs> I just don't understand, and like how you know who else you sound like? Who? <laughs> Matt's impression of Sandy. <laughs> yeah. Guys, if you missed it and you are curious because you like to watch the OC and that's why you listen to the show, of course. Um, why else to, would you listen? You need to donate to Patreon at the what is it five dollar level? Correct. So then you can listen to the backlog of us reading the an episode, a spec script of the episode. And you can hear Matt's version of Sandy. All Everyone at Doof Media, the only one that wasn't able to make it was Jarvis, but everyone else was there to do a part on our OC Has spec script. Has that ever happened last, before? I think we've Have had everyone. Have there ever everyone. been that many people before? I think we've before? had everyone before. Um, Including me? No. Sorry, you don't exactly. count that. Exactly. <laughs> um, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. And it's available on our Patreon right now, the the, the backlog. Okay, so. continue. Scott, let's just be done with my thorn and talk okay. about your thorn. Because I kind of took a lot of the show earlier with you my You were taking thorn. so much of the show. This is, I mean, let's be honest here. This, <laughs> is, the Elise, the this is the Elise go show and Scott too. Like, yeah. I'm... If, Elise if and Scott. We could rename the show and it would be in big letters, the Elise show. And then in the corner... It would be a parenthetical and also Scott. Yes. Um, my thorn or is... Or you want to be a with Scott. With Scott. Ooh, with. but that's almost... That almost is more important. Like, you know how in opening credits yeah. of a show, oh, yeah. like when no, you get the No, that's and... why I asked. Do you want to be and Scott, also Scott, or with Scott? 
I feel like also Scott is like an afterthought. It's like, oh, yeah, also there's Scott. So I think that one most fits the dynamic okay. that we have here. Okay. Like, and is too important. It's like, and also. <laughs> That's not how the situation works. Okay. Um, can I do my thorn? Yes, Scott. Do your thorn. My thorn of the week is the stuff involving the evil... Uh, the spider. So her name is Charlotte, so Elise is doing a Charlotte's <laughs> Web reference here. Um, I did not see that coming. I was I was stunned to silence there. I do that to you often. You do. Um, Charlotte Morgan is the woman that uh, Kirsten has met at rehab, and at the end of last week's episode was manipulating Kirsten into staying with her in her house, her lake house. Well, in this week's episode, we find out that it was in her lake house. <gasps> She dun, was dun, just dun. renting it, and the check bounced, so she has to leave. So what do we learn about Charlotte in this, Scott? Nothing. She's a liar. She's a liar. And she doesn't have money. Well, I feel like those are two things we both are. How did she get into Suriac? I'm assuming that's a very expensive. It is very expensive, isn't it, Scott? The, the Charlotte mystery deepens. And here's the problem. I don't care. I, I feel like, so what this episode did is it is, um, Kirsten leaves, much to Charlotte's chagrin and, and manipulation, Kirsten decides to leave and go to the will reading. Her father leaves her a letter that was written the day before he died, and she's terrified to open it, so she runs away from Sandy. It's a beautifully tragic scene where he's, like, desperately trying to keep her to stay. What are you doing? I should have never come here today. Charlotte told me this would happen. What? Well, what's happened? This letter, Sandy. What do you think this is? Well, I don't know. Let's open it together. We'll find out. He wrote this after our fight, after I told him he was going to die alone. I told him every problem our family ever had was because of him, that my drinking was because of him. Could you imagine what he wrote me back? I can't be here right now. Wait a minute. Wait, honey. Wait, wait. Come on. Kirsten, don't. Come on. Oh, it, it broke my heart. It broke my heart. It was sad. And then she runs out and gets a bottle of vodka, checks into, checks into a cheap motel, but does not drink it. She holds strong and she returns to Sandy. And the, it's a beautiful end of this episode where, like, the family unit of four is whole again for the first time. It's very powerful. And then you got the Charlotte stuff over here. And the weird part about it is I'm making a prediction here that we're not done with Charlotte. So because her web is still... Dear, being... <laughs> dear Lord... <laughs> Would you say that she's still spinning her web yeah. of lies? Yes. Okay. Um, Kirsten's going to wake up tomorrow and some pig is going to be written blood above her bed. <laughs> some Sandy. <laughs> um, yeah. So the Char it's so weird. That, like, obviously the Charlotte stuff's not done, but it's like, it's weird to me that we, we were setting up this thing in which Kirsten's road to recovery is going to have to go through Charlotte, this woman that is manipulating her for some un- unknown reason and then we just kind of resolved it very quickly here at the end where like kirsten i'm very proud of her she makes a decision herself she doesn't yeah. drink she decides to open the letter she decides to work with her husband again it's a very sweet scene i love it but like we set up all the charlotte stuff and that's why i know that we can't be done with her because th then it would be the worst character ever that had no reason to be here at all so i feel like it's gonna be stupid and that's why the charlotte stuff is my my thorn this week because i just feel like it was so dramatically disappointing mm. and it just means they're just saving it for later, which I guess makes sense. I just don't like it. I just didn't like it. I didn't like it. It's re it really sinks this episode for me because the will reading is such an important part of the episode and Charlotte is so tangential to it where if they really wanted to go into the melodrama, they could have made her like, like Kirsten says, I'll come, but I'm bringing Charlotte with me. And then there's like, mm. like this animosity between um, Sandy, and, Sandy Charlotte. and Charlotte and like, I still think they are going to go there. I think that's where we're going. Okay. But we just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I we'll didn't see. like it. I didn't okay. like it. Okay. Well, you're right, Scott. All we're right. not done with Charlotte. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Spoilers. It's fine. No one's going to listen to the podcast anymore because you've ruined the rest of the season for them now. Well, I haven't told you the big thing that you're missing out I know, on. I already know Seth dies, okay? So I already know it. So... How'd you find out? <laughs> I just made up something. Seth, I don't think he dies. 
Okay. Can we, can um, we do roses? Yeah, we can do rosies. So my Rosie, Scott kind of already touched on this a little bit, but we've been complaining in the past few seasons mm-hmm. about the Seth and Summer relationship and about how it's always been fun and we've enjoyed it. But then once they get together, it just really falls flat and they don't know how to write them. But somebody in the writer's room this season, Scott, somebody figured it out and it is fun. And I am here for the Seth and Summer relationship because it's not as much drama. It's just all good hearted, fun, back and forth. And so this week they are in drama club together. <laughs> they are stealing some set pieces and going to set them up on the beach for their friends. It's just Seth and Summer at Harbor. And and I'm here for it. I'm loving it. And I'm hoping that they continue. Right, Scott? Aren't you enjoying the Seth and Summer relationship this season? It's so good. It really it's is. It's so good. I mean, and it's the big plot movements and it's the small moments, too. Mm-hmm. There's this moment at the very beginning of the episode. First of all, there's the death breath Seth. So at the, at the opening of the episode, they're talking about the fact that, that now that Ryan's kicked out of um, – harbor that seth's gonna go back to being a social pariah that like every, like he's just gonna be the nerd that everyone's gonna be bullying which is hilarious because he's a senior and like i feel like like i'm not saying there was not bullying at my school i think there definitely was at my high school but i feel like by the time everyone's a senior like you just there's just too much going on in your life to give a shit about that stuff anymore i mean i'm not gonna assume my experience was universal but the fact that like Seth thinks he's going to get bullied is funny. But he does, Scott. He gets wedged by a sophomore. He gets wedged by a sophomore. <laughs> but there's this, like, there's this moment after the death breath Seth, which is apparently a nickname he had that Summer gave him <laughs> back when they were younger, which I love how that doesn't actually turn into a fight. That's just a funny ha-ha throwaway thing. But then there's this moment in, in the restaurant where, where Seth says something to the effect of, I'm going to need you to hold me. You really believe all that stuff? What, that you'll be ridiculed at school? Definitely. About Ryan and Marissa sticking together and everything being okay. Well, if they can stick together, I don't know, they've survived a lot. I don't know that they can survive this. I'm going to need you to hold me. Oh. Hold me. Come on. And Summer just, like, lets him lean into her chest and, like, they're just, like... And that's their relationship. I think they found the relationship dynamic where Seth is the dramatic, like, emotional one and Summer is the, the pillar, the support. Oh, what do you think that's like? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I think we both know I'm the pillar of this relationship. Are you the pillar? We can't have two pillars, Elise. That's not holding anything up. Are you a pillar? I'm a pillar. Are you sure? Hey, Lise. What? Can we go back to this past weekend and uh, everything? Pregnancy doesn't count. Every, oh, pregnancy is <laughs> the exception. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The point is. You did a good job being the pillar this weekend. Their Scott. dynamic is great. Um, their comedy, their pinging off each other with their quippiness is great. Ping, ping, ping. And then at the end of the episode, Seth sticks up for Summer. Um he they get caught trying to return the tiki stuff to the mm-hmm. set and the dean of discipline um decides to try to punish them and mm-hmm. all he can see is seth and he says tell me who else did this or else two and, months detention and he sticks up for his girl yeah he does and then of course Just by when, telling a lie and yeah and not saying who it was and then of course two minutes later he's bragging about that fact to ryan because he thinks that like sticking up for not not narking on your girlfriend is like the best thing ever and not just like the obvious thing that you're supposed to do. Yeah. But I no, I, I'm in total agreement with you. The Seth and thanks. Summer stuff this season has been all time. And I, I know it's going to have to get dramatic eventually because it's a drama. Yeah. But I hope that they they don't lose sight of what the relationship is. This this mm-hmm. dynamic they've defined in that drama. Drama's fine. It's good. Even. Drama. It's uh, some would say the cornerstone of dramatic television. Hmm. Is drama. What about soap opera television? Um, that's actually the cornerstone of that would be uh, soap. Ah, uh, yeah. Dove. No, Irish Spring. Ah. Uh, you want to hear? Soap? Do you want to hear what my rose is? Yeah, I guess. What's your rose? I think this is the first time that this has happened on the show. We are how many episodes into the show? Twenty four plus twenty six. So a lot is the answer. Um, we are over halfway through this show. We are. And this is the first time my rose has been 
Ryan and Marissa's relationship. I think Ryan and Marissa's rela- relationship in this episode is really good. So, Do tell why you believe this, Scott. So what happens in this episode is that Marissa um, is told by her mother that her and Jimmy Cooper and both of their daughters are moving to Hawaii. And they're moving to Hawaii. They're leaving because she's kicked out of school and they want a fresh start where they can be a family together. And um, at, at first, all the teenagers are like, we got to stop this. We got to do something. We got to run away. And then eventually both of them just kind of realize that maybe this is just the best thing. Marissa wants to be with her family. She honestly, genuinely wants to be with her family and she wants to help her family work out. Now we know because her dad's a lying idiot that none of this is going to work out at the end of the episode because we know he's going to get beaten up and or murdered by mob people and it's not going to happen. But our characters are treating it like it's going to happen. So these two characters get what is basically a goodbye night, right? Um, As we said Summer and Seth steal the stuff from the set of South Pacific and like make it a hut, a beautiful romantic hut on the beach where they. Um, and when you're a teenager mm. and you have one more night together, what are they going to do, Scott? A bang, 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 a bang, da, bang, 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 I was trying to give you some background music I, for you I to feel keep like it, going. I feel like it went on for too long, so I just wanted to cut it short. Yeah, that's what they did. Yeah, I mean, it did not go on for too long, let's be honest here. Well, actually, Ryan's got some experience. I don't know. So does Marissa. Yeah, that's true. Luke. Mm-hmm. That's it, right? Mm-hmm. That we know of. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they uh, they consummate their relationship on the last night. And I don't know. I, I loved that we didn't get mixed up in schemes. I love that our two characters, like, talk to each other as adults ish and like actually dealt with what was going to happen and were mature about it and were nice about it and then they had this beautiful evening together on their last night instead of some stupid zany plan like i felt like and the show even comments on this the show even comments on the fact that every time something like this happens they do some stupid zany plan like hiding ryan in a mobile home or or or, um, um um not mobile, uh, model home or like running away on your boat or like hiding on an Island or all these, and it never works. So just accept it and, and deal with it. And I thought that was great. And the show even makes fun of itself when they're in the tent, when Ryan and and Marissa are kissing out and kissing out, I combined kissing and making out. We should call it that. Why don't we call it kissing out? Um, can I have the word origin please? Yeah. What is the word origin of making out? Where does that come from? I like snogging. Yeah, I like snogging better, too. Because, Why don't you say snogging? Because I'm not British. But it doesn't matter. We should look that up. Making out. Huh. Anyway. Um, and then suddenly Marissa like says, I'm sorry, I just can't do this. And she rushes out of the tent. And I was like, what the fuck? And then she pokes her head back in the tent and you realize she was just kidding. <clears throat> Wait, stop. I'm sorry, but I can't do this. I have to go. What? You weren't even gonna try and stop me? (laughs) You are so not funny. (laughs) I'm kind of funny. (laughs) You weren't even gonna run after me? (laughs) It's great. It's a great moment. The show's making fun of itself. I love when shows make fun of themselves. I hate Marissa. I love Marissa and and Ryan forever. I'm team. You're gonna eat those words, bud. I'm team. Mo Rai. Mo Rai Mo Rai Ma Ma Rai. Raisa? Mary, Mary, Team Mary. Raisa? No, look, it spells Mary. Team Mary. Fine. Okay, well, I'm glad that out of this entire show, all four seasons, we're going to at least say that Ryan and Marissa were okay once. It could never happen again, but... Could never. We'll see. Okay, Scott, it's time now to move on to your style section. Scott's got the eye, at least got the brain, and we're going to talk about... <laughs> Come on, Scott. Tell me about the style in the OC. Hey, 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 come on, Scott. Tell me about the style in episode three, yeah. Oh, one of my favorite things about you is that you'll take little gems from conversations that you and I have had off mic yeah. and just throw them into the uh, into the, the episode without context. That's really great. It's my specialty. 
This week on Scott Style Section, it is Argyle Week. We got a <laughs> lot of good Argyle here on the OC this week. But first, um, I want to spend some time mm-hmm. on my boy Seth. Okay. Uh, Talk about him. So first, Seth is wearing a uh, a button down short sleeve shirt, mm-hmm. which he normally is. But I gotta say, Elise, this is my jam right here. This looks like a Scott shirt. This is it is a Scott shirt. This he's wearing a Scott shirt, and that's why I like it so much. It's a Ralph Lauren polo. It is, and uh, it is light green and white plaid. Plaid, yeah. Mm-hmm. Looks nice. The, I want. I would. I would wear the shirt today. Paired with some dark gray chinos. They look good. The they chinos do look, good. look good. Side shoulder messenger bag. I also have one of those. Digging the chin. Mine is from Timbuktu, which I did not think was big um, back in Seth's day. But it's also not big anymore. I think no, Timbuktu bags are out. They are. What's the new bag? I don't know, Scott. On the, what's Leather bag. The new bag. Top, Top bag, bag trends. trends of 2020. Okay, these are all These are all girls. female bags. Yeah. Frame. What's a frame bag? I don't know. Really, a hobo bag? Yeah, that's hobo the official bags. name. Is a hobo bag? There's actually a brand called a hobo. Look at the size of this fucking bag. I'm sorry, this is terrible audio. This woman has a giant ass bag. I think that we could fit. Oh my gosh, that girl's boob was showing. Oh yeah. What? what? <laughs> this is the weirdest thing ever. Yeah, Why did they there's pick a, that? There's a woman walking down a, a runway with a bamboo handle bag and her her titties out of her dress. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to... <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on on this website. Every, everyone go to marieclaire.com and look for bag trends. Slash tw- fashion slash A3027-1692 <laughs> slash bag dash trends dash 2020 slash. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> So this is what happens when you're an editor of a fashion magazine and you get so caught up in the bag that you stop oh paying gosh. attention to anything what else. What are they doing? Um, what are we doing? I, so Scott, what you're telling me is I got to replace my Timbuk too. Only if you show your boob. Okay. Fair. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, also in this scene with Seth in a shirt that I would wear is yes. uh, Summer, mm-hmm. who I don't know how to describe this thing. As you said, you're the brain. Um what is going on so, here? So, first of all, it's a silky material. Silky. And one thing that was very trendy in the early 2000s is what I would refer to as a drop waist. Drop waist. Yes. Now, so now think please about, define what a drop waist is. Think about a flapper dress. Okay. To wear. That's from the 20s. Yes, from the 20s. To wear. There is a band typically around where the waist is. And they do the Charleston and it. it yeah, f- only the flapper dress. I mean, it was. It was longer than what – it was shorter than what women were wearing these days, but longer than what – I mean, no, shorter than what women were wearing in the past. It was But scandalous. longer than what we are wearing today. Yes. And this shirt, I would say, is stylized from that sort of drop waist idea. It's, it's teal. Sleeveless. Um, sleeveless. Yeah. I can't tell straps? if it has, it might have spaghetti straps underneath her hair, but she has a nice necklace with, um, I would say some like stones, maybe shells to complement it. It looks good. I'm digging it. I'm yeah, digging it. It looks good. And then later on in, in the season or the episode rather, we have Seth rocking, he's rocking teal now. Yeah. And he's in a teal Argyle. Um, looks like another Ralph Lauren. It looks polo. like Ralph Lauren. Here's the thing about this polo actually. I think it's the wrong thing to dress Seth in because it actually makes him look pretty well built and they're not trying to do that. Like Adam Brody is like, he's skinny, but he's also like a movie star. So he's like, he's, he works out. He's not a shrimp. Yeah. And, but he's playing a character that's supposed to be a shrimp, but they put him in this Argyle shirt that looks really good. And it looks, he's got some tone in there and we don't, we don't need some tone on our You know, this could be a Winston shirt. no, it doesn't have birds on it. But it could still be a Winston shirt. Uh, my, I, I describe my style as um, a less confident Winston <laughs> from New Girl. Um, I love the I'm trying to get wears. you there. I'm, I'm trying I'm, to get I'm, you. We're slowly over time. I know. I can't pull it off. Winston pulls off everything. Yeah, he does. Um, but I love this Argyle. Speaking of Argyle, though, guess who else is wearing Argyle? Taylor. 
Taylor Townsend. But she's wearing like the classic, like Cohen's Argyle. It's not, it's not multicolor. So it kind of fades in. It's just the diamond pattern. But Taylor is wearing the white. sweater vest. It's the sweater vest with pink and black and white diamonds. It's, I think it looks good actually. I think it looks way better than the sweater tied around the shoulders that she wore last week. This and, is the type of preppy I can, I can, I can rock. And it's with. also better because there's no button down underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. Had she done that, then we would have said no. But it's, they're at least... She's dressing like a person who lives in Southern California yeah. and wants to be uh, not overheating constantly. Yeah. Which is good. Because yeah. uh, it's hot. And she's hot. hot. Taylor. Ooh. Oh, do you think so? Ooh, yeah. When do we get to add Taylor Townsend to relationship status? Oh, I don't know, Scott. Maybe we who should... Who do you think that Taylor is going to be with? Let's add one right now. Scott and Taylor. Ten out of Ten. Who do you think Taylor would end up with in this show? That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, the only the thing is, unless they add some more characters, like mm-hmm. Ryan is the only option here. Because mm-hmm. you're not going to split up Maseth and Summer. Mm-hmm. It's got to be Ryan. Mm-hmm. Or they've got to add more characters. Mm-hmm. They need more boys. Mm-hmm. Bring back Luke. <gasps> this will come back. I am neither going to confirm <laughs> nor deny. Well, we'll find out. Okay. Let's move on to our next All right. and final segment yes. of the show, Relationship Status. So, Sandy and Kirsten Cohen last week were at an 8 out of 10. Sandy has tried this week to be very understanding as Kirsten makes her way back from Syriac to her old life. But this week, Kirsten does not want him to be her partner through it all. When Caleb's will is read and Kirsten gets a letter from her dad, she runs away from Sandy instead of leaning into him for help. Eventually, she comes around and decides to come home to Sandy and the boys. We only hope that this is a return to her focus on a relationship with Sandy, too. So I'm not going to bump them up. I'm not going to bump them down because I don't really think we can make a good determination of really how her time away and also her time with Charlotte and everything that's going on is going to have an effect on the relationship. I think we would bump her down at the beginning of the episode and we would erase that deficit by the end of the episode. So I think that's a good call. Okay. Good call. Tell me about Summer and Seth. Well, last week we gave them an eight out of 10 as well. The force seems strong with this cut. You dork. (laughs) You're such a dork. (laughs) In episodes past, we've complained that they don't know how to write Seth and Summer when they aren't fighting or chasing after each other, but the dynamic seems to be working these days. The, they are the only two of the Fab Four left at Harbor and decide that they need to stick together. They get coffee together, are tricked into joining jo- Drama Club together, and they even plan a crime together. Hopefully, they continue to play off each other. We are going to give Seth and Summer a 9 out of 10. I think this is the highest we've ever put this relationship. So this is a watershed day in the Seth and Summer relationship. But don't you think that they get to go up a point? Huh? Don't you think that they get to go up a point? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, good. Hundo percent. Okay. Now this next one, uh, we we're, we're not in agreement on this, so please well, go. Well, I'll ahead. explain why. Okay. Okay. So Ryan and Marissa last week were at a four out of ten. They were going to be separated by an ocean when Marissa thought she was moving away. So they thought that like normal teenagers and decided that this was the opportune time to bang. They bang in a prop from the High School Musical <laughs> and then come to find out that they are not going to be separated after all. I'm only keeping them at a four to 10. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I don't think that we should elevate relationships purely based on physicality. Okay. Um, Here's what I assumed was going to be the unwritten rule of relationship status on the OC. You bang, you go up. You bang, you go up. (laughs) That's just what happens. You bang, you go up. It doesn't have to be a bunch of points. You blow up. It can be one point. You bang each other. You go up. You bang somebody else, you go down. These are the rules. You go down on somebody else, you go down on the relationship status. Okay. But you bang. Uh Uh-huh. You go up. (laughs) Is it bad that the entire time they were in that tiki torch banging, I was so worried about all the candles they had lit fall over and catch the tiki no, torch on fire it's not bad at all that seems like a fire hazard now i know they're it on does. like a beach so there's sand everywhere but it just didn't seem safe or sanitary no. she's gonna get sand in her vagina. i know that's why i hate the beach i hate the sand in the vagina it goes everywhere like the vagina yeah that can't be sanitary no 
Okay, tell me about Julie and Jimmy. Julie and Jimmy. Last week, we gave them a four out of ten. Jimmy's crimes finally catch up with him in this episode when everyone finds out when Caleb, that Caleb was broke, which means Jimmy can't get any money from Julie. The two had planned a small-ish wedding, and Jimmy leaves Julie at the altar. Marissa tells her dad not to come back if he leaves this time. So, it looks like Julie and Jimmy are donezo. So that's a zero out of ten. That's it. That's it. Off the board. That's it. <laughs> Delete it. So now this week we have one new couple, mm-hmm. Scott and Taylor. Mm-hmm. We're going to give them a 10 out of 10 because Scott wants to have a fictitious relationship with Taylor Townsend. And so he just gets to pick who he has a relationship with. But we're also having another relationship we're going to add to the board, Elise and Scott. And so if he's at a 10 <laughs> out of 10 with Taylor, he must be at at least a 1 out of 10 with his wife. Nothing like having a fictitious relationship with teenagers. <laughs> just shaking my head. <laughs> I'm just shaking my head. Okay. I was just kidding. I don't. Taylor's fine. Okay. Um, they need to add some characters to the show because our relationship status section is down to three. It is down to three. Scott, next week, uh, the episode is called The Last Waltz. That's interesting. Any predictions about what you think That's, might be happening? I mean, there's going to be a dance. Okay. Obvi. Or maybe uh, maybe we're going to bring back Cotillion. <laughs> mm. Let's bring back the final Cotillion. Or maybe that. Once I, you've already had a Cotillion, you don't have it again. Well, okay, fuck. But what if... Caitlin. <gasps> little sis. <laughs> Cotillion. At boarding school. She no, she's going to come back because they're broke because they can't afford boarding school. Ah, okay. That's a prediction that you mm-hmm, got there. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know what else the waltz would be. Okay. I don't know. Waltz Disney. Waltz Disney. Mm-hmm. And you say my jokes are bad. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, let's move on, Scott. At least now we're going to move on to our final section of the episode. It's called Dear Elise. This is the section in which someone, a, a definite real person, writes in to my wife, Elise, and asks her for relationship <laughs> advice. This is definitely what happens. They're asking Elise personally for relationship advice. Uh, that's what the section is. So, Elise. Here we go. Dear Elise, my girlfriend and I have been together for roughly a year. When we were dating, she told me she was very active and liked sex a lot. And I checked. It was true. But for the past couple months, every time I try to initiate, because now she never does it, I get rejected. She says she doesn't feel like having sex, that she doesn't want it. I treat her very well, in my opinion. She comes to my place and stays the weekend. I take her out to dinner. I care for her, etc. But 100% of the times, she rejects me. I talked to her about this, but she just said she doesn't want it for no apparent reason. Also, I checked. She's not cheating. For what she says, she doesn't even masturbate. I'm starting to get desperate, actually, and I'm running out of ideas. Please help. Elise, please help. I think the first thing he should do... Uh Uh-huh. Is a look in the mirror. Has he let himself go? Ooh, 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 ouch. Ouch. <laughs> you know, maybe it's not that she just doesn't want to have the sex. Maybe it's just she doesn't want to have it with you. And he checked. Who yeah, did he check here's, with? Here's, that's my biggest question on this. This is what does I checked mean? <laughs> maybe she's pregnant. That's scary. You know, maybe, um, Okay, maybe when she said that she liked sex a lot when you started dating, uh, she lied to you. But he checked. Again, who did he check with? I don't know. I feel like in this instance, I checked means we were we were having sex a lot. And yeah, that's called um, a the new relationship. Phase. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think I think there might be some problems in this relationship. If you want me to get really analytical, it's like I treat her very well. She comes to my place. I take her out to dinner. I care for her, etc. So like, I think, you know what? If she doesn't want to do that with you, then you just have to reexamine like what's going on with you because yeah. there's something that is making her not want to do that with you. So stop thinking. Maybe she's that just not just, into you anymore. Yeah. And swallow that pill. Y'all need y'all need to have uh, y'all need to have a, a conversation, and also you need to have a conversation with yourself about what I checked means because you're doing a lot of checking, and I don't know what that means. What does it mean? Well, if I said to you, 
Elise doesn't like sports. I checked. What does that mean? How did I check? Did you ask me if I like no, sports? Did I, you ask other people I didn't if I ask, like sports? I checked. I checked. That means based on my own observation. I checked. It's my opinion. Anyways. Starting to get desperate, running out of ideas. Yeah, look at yourself in the mirror. But what if you said like, like cats die when you remove their head? I checked. <laughs> Shit gets <laughs> ominous fast, doesn't it? It gets real <laughs> ominous, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I'm telling you, question asker. I think. Like I don't want to conclude about people I don't know, and this person's definitely real and definitely wrote right into you personally. What if this is true? <laughs> but I think someone needs to check on this guy. We need to look on relation on the Reddit and see. Like I think my boyfriend is a serial killer. I, I checked. checked. Oh me! Well, well Scott, that's all we have time for this week. With everyone else, if you like this podcast, you can check out all the other shows that we do over at doofmedia.com. I can't promise that any of them are going to give you the same wonderful dynamic that Scott and I have, but they do try. <laughs> Also, you can consider donating to our Patreon over at patreon.com slash doofmedia. That's what we touched on earlier when we said if you want to donate at the $5 level, you can listen to the backlog of the Patreon Doof and Chill where we have a table read of one of the spec scripts, which was a lot of fun. It's so funny. And it then, features a foursome in it. Yeah. If you also happen to be listening to the Apple Podcasts, go over and drop us a rating and review. We would appreciate it. And that's about all I've got. Scott, anything else? No, we will see you right back here next week for episode four of season three. And if you are an American that is listening to this podcast, have a happy Thanksgiving. But don't go to your family's house. Be safe. Yeah, be very safe. Seriously. No no jokes aside. Wear a mask. Don't be within six feet of anyone for longer than 15 minutes. So that means you have 14 minutes as a time limit if you're going to be within six feet of someone and you need to be masked. You better eat that turkey fast. And here's what you don't do. Here's what you don't do. My parents don't have COVID. I checked. <laughs>